Hello Maverick Traders, this is Imri and welcome to today's currency recap. It is Thursday, August 10th. So today we will be doing a review of what's been happening in the markets. We'll be going over some meaningful news of the day. We're going to be taking a look at the broader equities, uh, commodity markets as well. And then we're going to take a look at our proprietary currency baskets, as well as any major news events to close out the week. And of course, we're going to explore some potential trading setups as well. In this currency recap, we will be using advanced technical analysis. We believe technical analysis is the fundamental skill for every profitable currency trader. Maverick Currencies is currently hiring serious technical analyst uh, traders for a trader position. Traders will trade firm capital and keep majority of the profits that are generated. If you're a technical trader with a technical trading system, we want to meet you. So click the application link in, this, in the description below this video. Now let's break down today's market action. Okay, market analysis. Let's get things started. So news of the day, stocks rise after soft inflation data, the dollar reverses initial losses, and 10-year bonds absolutely jump. Now, in terms of commodity uh, markets, oil took a pretty big hit today, which, you know, energy markets have been on a tier. Na natural gas, which isn't represented on this chart, also had a big down day today. Uh, stocks, I mean... Just just drifting right now, uh, given the incredible run-up we've had, this makes complete sense, and crypto and gold just chopping around as well. If we're taking a look at our fiat currencies, the yen continues its incredible slide. The dollar, like I said, reverse losses, and then the Swissy and the euro were also strong on the day. The pound uh, being uh, the, the loser in terms of the European currencies, and then the commodity currencies more or less flat on the day, just kind of chopping around as well. In terms of crypto, it's been a pretty quiet day except for Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, uh, which, you know, Bitcoin Cash saw a, a pretty significant slide today, Litecoin a little bit underwater as well. Okay, so in terms of the market outlook, no change from last week where we are sticking with a plus two for now. Uh, you'll notice we're below the 20 period moving average, still above the 50, and the slope of the moving averages continues to be positive. So I highlighted the upper boundary line of this channel uh, last week. Actually, I think the week before that as well. And you can see how we've so far drifted off after meeting that resistance line. Whether there's a lot more decline to go, uh, I'm not so sure. I think we might find support very, very soon here. And after that, let's see if we're going to take a run at new highs. I'm not 100% sure which way that's going to break yet. We have to kind of take it session by session. So we'll see if, my, my, uh, if I have anything new to update you with in next week's market recap. Now, in terms of news, Friday uh, early in the morning, we have some GDP data out of the UK, and then we've got core PPI at 8.30 as well, and then some consumer sentiment news coming in at 10 a.m. Okay, time for some currency analysis. We've got velocity all over the place here. I say the headline currencies to be looking at on the negative side would be the yen and the pound. And then on the positive velocity side of things, we are, we're looking at the dollar, the euro, and the Swissy. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's take a look at some possible trades. So heading over to TradingView, first we've got the Japanese yen. Uh, now with the yen, we saw this in really impressive rally that kicked off at the beginning of July um, and then we had another impressive rally that ended at the end of July and since then the yen has just been a dog it has not really been able to recover um, and we're, we're gonna have to see I, I'm still very cautious about about how much weaker the yen can get before we get a significant reaction from the Bank of Japan that might be a catalyst for a reversal in the yen's fortunes here I would say we're closer to a really big move higher in the yen than we are to a further slides in the yen. However, I do think we have uh, a weaker yen in store in the immediate term and in the near future. And uh, I've been saying this for some time, but when the yen reverses, watch out. That is going to be one of the most epic currency trades in the history of currency trades. Okay, next up we have the dollar. So I said I'll be bearish uh, the U.S. dollar, so long as we don't exceed this high from... Uh, the end of June, June 29th. Well, guess what? We poked above that high this week, so I can no longer be, B, 
be outright bearish the dollar for now. I'm going to switch to being neutral and slightly bullish even. So initially I pointed out in our dollar basket that we've broken this trend line and this had a kind of a, a triangular shape to it and we've broken down and, and we might see a, a lot more downside to go. But given the strong bullish reversal that we've seen, that doesn't really seem to be the case anymore. So I still believe the rally in the dollar is ultimately counter trend and counter trend rallies take place in three waves. Okay, speaking from an Elliottitian's perspective. So what that means is that we have one wave here and then this is our counter trend corrective wave and I think we're gonna get one more wave higher and because markets are fractal, we can combine these waves into one larger three wave movement and once that upside is exhausted, that's when I think we're going to see the dollar turn around and slide once more. Okay, so keep an eye on the dollar. Uh, don't chase the moves, but I, I do think we have a little bit higher to go. How much higher? I'd be looking for at least a measured move here, and that would bring us to a value of roughly 124.4 in the dollar index, which would bring us back to where we were trading in November 2022, if this analysis is correct. Okay, moving on now to the Swissy. All right, so I, I said... Uh, I, I switched minds on the Swissy a couple times. At first, I said, "Hey, we're pushing up against historic extremes. Let's look to uh, you know, let's look to for for reasons to to be short the Swissy, not long." But then we high based and we've broken out of that high base. And last week, I said I'm looking for reasons to be long the Swissy, and that's so far played out. And I think that trade still has more room to run. Uh, and now with the euro. The euro and the Swissy do tend to be more closely correlated more often than not. That's kind of what happened. After ping-ponging in between resistance, we've finally broken out. Zooming out to a weekly chart, uh, we can now update our next point of resistance. Well, we're actually through that level as well. So we're, we're now looking at, at highs from March 2020. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy as far as euro strength is concerned. But I would say... I would say so long as we remain above this broken out uh, support uh, resistance level, which should now act as support at 132.70 in this currency basket, I'm going to be bullish the euro, looking to buy the euro on pullbacks. And the pound is just stalling. It's, it's not really doing anything. I've talked for weeks now about how the pound is at a pivotal juncture. And similar to my initial stance on the Swissy, I'm looking for reasons to be short the pound. I just don't have that reason quite yet based on what's going on in this basket. Uh, but you can see why, oh, maybe you can see why I, I prefer to be short the pound. It's because of this really impressive area of resistance that we're currently still trading in right now. I mean, this is held going back to 2018. Um, so I'd say the probability is that it's gonna hold again now. But let's not fall trap. Uh, let's not fall victim to the trap of linear extrapolation, which is thinking that trends continue forever. They don't. Uh, so eventually, eventually a pattern breaks. So I'm open-minded. I would prefer to be short the pound because I think the risk is skewed lower, not higher. But as always, we have to let the price chart tell us if that is indeed going to be the case or not. All right, Canadian dollar traded back down into support, and then last week I called out this uh, rising wedge that we've broken out of. And we've just been kind of chopping around, but I think the Canadian dollar is, is now going to start weakening and we should see the, the loonie start to weaken across the board, I would say. One of the currency pairings I'm, I'm really interested in would be the euro and the Canadian dollar uh, and, and the Canadian dollar and the Swiss franc. Okay, the Aussie dollar. Uh, I mean, we spiked up to, to basically retest this broken swing low from July 11th. And I, I think we're headed lower. So I like the idea of continuing to be short the Aussie dollar. And no surprise, it's the same thing with the Kiwi dollar. I'm just looking for us to break the support level from June 7th. All right, that wraps things up in terms of potential trading setups across the currency baskets. So in conclusion, just continue to play relative strength and weakness. It's really important to be patient here. Always make sure you're sizing your positions appropriately. And of course, always, always follow your trading plan. Uh, we don't really have any more events for the remainder of the week. Uh, so looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Good luck, Maverick traders. I'll talk to you soon.